Okay, I'm gonna pour the one piece mold. Uh, it's a good idea to get a pitcher and fill it up with enough slip that you know it's gonna fill up your mold here. So I'm just gonna go through the process of uh, casting a cup and it's the process that, that I use. It works for me. Um, it varies from person to person and it also works with the type of casting slip I'm using. But what you wanna do is uh, have your dry mold and um, you may wanna get some kind of a pitcher or something like that and fill it up at a pretty um, steady rate. Avoid stopping in between because the plaster immediately starts absorbing the water, so if you take a break, you're gonna get a, a line um, that's gonna have to be cleaned up later. And so you fill it up, go ahead and fill it up over the top and let it spill over. Um, and then for this slip and my, my interests, um, I cast this for about 10 minutes, and that's gonna get me like about an eighth of an inch um, wall. So what's happening here is that um, this dry porous plaster is, is drinking out the water from your casting slip and while it's doing that it's building up a wall on the inside and you can kind of see how the fluid level has dropped as it's pulled the moisture out when you can actually see the wall there. So uh, the way I do it and the way I'd recommend doing it if you want a nice level even cup is after a few minutes and you notice the level's gone down as you need to top it off. Um, and for something like this probably since it's not casting for that long, probably only once over the course of the whole casting timed period. All right, so the time has passed and it's time to now uh, pour the excess casting slip out. So I'm just using my bucket that I mixed all my slip in to start. And uh, there's a particular way that to pour this out that's gonna give you a nice interior. Um, and I pick this thing up at the hardware store. This is actually a, a like a closet shelving thing and I like to use these to pour my slip out on. It goes through it and it holds your mold up here. But you could easily also use a, a piece of wood here. And saying that, why we have this little elevated rod here is that we want to pour this thing out and let it rest at, a, at an angle like this. And you leave it in here until it, it just completely stops dripping. And why I do this and leave it at an angle is that if you actually turn it completely upside down, and this is particular to a cup, that um, the flat bottom of the interior is gonna have little drips of casting slip as it sets up. And whenever you look in your cup and you're drinking from it later, you're gonna have some undulations and irregularities from drips of casting slip on the bottom. All the slips poured out, uh, it stopped dripping. Interior of the our cup form is dry, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut this excess material off the top with my razor knife. And I kind of, I'll slice it all the way around and use the top of the plaster as a guide, um, but I don't go completely perpendicular to um, the shape of my form. I always kind of hold my knife at a little bit of an angle, so I'm kind of slicing like this. I'm just going to cut down in here, all the way around. Okay, uh, it's just gonna be a few more minutes and this thing will be ready to be removed from the mold. So I think our cup's probably ready to be turned over and uh, to get this thing out of the mold. And I know that because as, this thing, as the water's being drawn out, just like with uh, a normal soft clay, um, as it dries, it's shrinking and I can see that there's a little um, gap here that's, that's around the edge. So it seems like it's come loose in there. So the way I do this, I like to take a board or um, you know something flat and just put it on the top. And I'm going to turn this thing over in the manner that you'd flip over a, a cake, I guess. And because that our clay piece on the inside is shrank, it should just drop right out. Okay. Um, at this stage, you want to be very careful when you're picking it up not to deform the rim. Um, you know, just like throwing porcelain, um, it, it, clay has memory and any time you deform these things, even if it, you deform it and try to put it back in the shape in the firing, you're gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna change its shape again back to it's deformed um, however you've deformed it. Now I have, uh, I previously already cast a cup and I wanna go over the method that I use that it works pretty well for as far as treating the rim if you've accidentally cut it irregular, it has some waivers on it, or if you want to make it rounder, 
Um, I do this stage, this kind of cleaning up the rim whenever the cup is actually bone dry, and that helps keep me from squeezing it and deforming it. So what I'm gonna use is uh, actually um, some vinegar and water and my rasp and a sponge. I'm just gonna dip the rim of this thing in the vinegar. And just let it soak in for a second. And now if I look at my rim and if it has any irregularities, I can plane it down here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of create a nice little bevel here so I don't have this sharp edge. And I'm just gonna go around it. Kind of soften it up. Lastly, inspect it and then smooth it out with the sponge. I also wanna look around the whole thing and just see if there's any irregular parts, see if my slip created any weird lines or anything that, and you can get like that, you can go ahead and smooth the, the whole cup down. Okay. There it's done.